Amazing. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Hi, guys. Um, so, guys, 5% of our account, okay, every single day. That's five pounds. Five pounds. So that could be one big trade of 50 pips, or that could be two trades of 25 pips, or five small trades of 10 pips. Really, really straightforward. Okay, so that means over 20 days, you're then making 100 pounds. That's, we're not even trading on Fridays, right? That's four days a week. Four days a week to double your account size, 200 pounds in your account, 0 0.02. And then for month two, what's 5% of 200 pounds? 10 pounds a day. You make 10 pounds a day for 20 days, you're up again another lot size. You've made another 200 pounds, 0 0.04 lot size, okay? Doubling our accounts so that month three, we're making 400 pounds of our 400 pounds, doubling up again. It snowballs very, very quickly, guys. So that is what we need to be doing. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be hitting those targets. It's when we start messing around and playing with our leverage, when we start to do silly things and mess around with our account, okay? So that's just my teacher talk for you guys. I come in strict because you know how I do. I wanna see everybody growing. I wanna see those flames in our WhatsApp groups because everybody is prospering. We shouldn't have to be over leveraging to hit our goals, okay? We are sophisticated and sensible traders. So let's get in with the real tea. So for those of you who are brand new, guys, we have 37 people in the chat. This is amazing. Hey, I hope you are all good. I hope you've enjoyed the sun. Um, who am I? I am, my name is Jessica. I am a dancer at heart. Ballet is my first love. And when I was at uni studying dance, I realized that dance wasn't going to pay me. So I had to think of other ways to try and make some money. Um, I went into YouTube and started doing Afro hair tutorials to make money. And since graduating, I'm a teacher and lecturer in contemporary dance and choreography. I'm also a performing stunt artist. So you may have seen me in some TV shows or some films and not known it was me. <laughs> um, and I've also been a digital marketing strategist all those years because um, you know the internet is a fantastic way of making and residual income. So with all of those things, I managed to become a homeowner in 2019. I bought a flat and then I actually ended up losing that nine to five that I was in. I was made a role was completely removed from the company. Um, it's saying my internet is unstable. So if you can't hear me, just, um, just let me know. Okay. I've always got the chat box open guys. So I had to find a way to pay my mortgage. I just bought a house with now no income. And that is when trading came to me and I've now been using it to keep myself stable. So guys, there is no reason why you too can't be using this to fund your lifestyle. We don't want to be millionaires tomorrow. We just want to pay the bills and have food in the fridge because six years is when we're going to hit that, that number. Okay, so that's just a bit about me. You can find me if you ever want to message me. If you have any questions, I'm all answering questions for you guys. Trade Creatives, my group is Trade Creatives, um, but I'm always on my phone. So make sure you guys give me a follow now. And for those of you who follow, I'll give you guys a little shout out too, because I love to see it and I've always got Instagram open anyway. Um, okay, that was um, a boot camp that I've done and there's no longer. Amazing, guys, so for those of you who are brand spanking new, and for those of you who maybe don't have a clue what Forex is at all, some of us have come into this company and not even knowing what it actually is, right? So Forex literally means foreign exchange. It's the two words put together, and we know it's an international market that is open 24 hours a day, five days a week. It's open Sunday, 6 a.m. Sydney time to Friday, 5 p.m. New York time. And it's a multi-trillion dollar market, that it's about, it's more than six, six trillion dollars that is passing hands every single day. So there is no reason why, you know, us little guys can't be taking advantage and trying to catch some pips here and there. There's plenty to go around. Six trillion dollars, guys. We can definitely be making the most of it every single day. Um, so in terms of the time frame at which the market is open, if you haven't got this, take a screenshot. Um, I just made this little graphic for you guys so that you know when the market is open. So we have what is called the Asian session, and that is this time right here when we are all asleep. Even though this time has the uh, kind of lowest amount of volatility, it's quite quiet. There are still strategies that you can use to be trading these hours. So maybe, you know, you work night shifts but you have a little time to be on your phone catching some pips. There are definitely gonna be strategies out there for you. Um, or maybe you're just a night owl and you like taking advantage of the market during the quiet time, okay? You're gonna find um, a, a style of trading that is going to be perfect for your schedule. So there's definitely opportunity to make money in the Asian session. 
but money does start to move at about 5 a.m. in the morning, when, which this session is called the accumulation session, where money is building up in preparation for the London daybreak. So between 5 and 8 a.m. in the morning, we see money being pushed in certain currency pairs um, in preparation for the London daybreak, which happens at 8 a.m. in the morning, the highest rate of volatility in the day. And it is a, it is a session um, in which people in the US stay awake. They're, they're not catching their Zs because they're trying to catch some pips instead, right? It is such a high volatility session. And so if you don't have a lot of time and maybe you just wanna trade for an hour a day, the London session is perfect for those kind of people, okay? We then have, the New York session, apologies. We then have the New York session, which um, opens uh, in, in the afternoon for the London session. And um, even though this does have a high rate of volatility, it's not as high as London daybreak. And towards the end of the day, money is winding down. In prep. So this happens day in, day out, Monday to Friday. And then we're closed on the weekend because we don't work on weekends, okay? So just have that in mind when you're starting to develop your um, trading schedule, you're gonna know exactly what it is, what times you will like to be trading, okay? So we have this market, we know when it's open, but who is actually getting involved? And to be honest, the majority of it is um, institutions. They make up about 85% and then 15% is mostly hedge funds. So the institutions include the commercial banks. They sit at the very top. They, they manage large currency reserves and interest rates. So it's really important when you've got, um, when we've got news, we need to keep an eye on our fundamentals. So if you don't know the word fundamentals, write that down. That, me that means the news. It's kind of like the physical aspect of money. What's happening in the day to day and how is that going to have an effect on the technicals, what we see on the charts. Okay. And then we have the multi-channel networks. Um, this is, these are our MCN. So they trade the pound for the US dollar in really large quantities and then push that back into the US. So that, that, those are our hedge funds, right? And then we have the retail traders, the regular Joes and the small businesses, you and me from our mobile phones, trying to catch some pips here and there. And even though we are the little guys, they absolutely love us because they know exactly how we trade because they can see all of the positions that are in the market. They can see where there are large quantities of people entering into the market, right? So this is why it's important that we're not trading like all of the other retail traders that are out there. There are, there are millions of people trying to learn how to trade from YouTube for free. And the banks know this. They know exactly how the majority of people are trading because they can see it on their software right? Which is why it's really important how we, that we learn to become institutional traders. We learn to trade like the banks, which is exactly what IM Academy teach us, okay? We don't want to be the little guys who are swiped away and they just take our, take our money, right? We learn how to avoid those and to trade smart, guys, okay? So just keep that in mind um, for when we're carrying on through this session. We're learning to trade like the banks, okay? So what exactly is being traded? We know that foreign exchange is to do with um, exchanging currency and that's exactly what's happening. You are buying one currency and selling the other. So exactly like when you go on holiday um, and you go to the airport and you exchange your pounds for some, for some dollars or whatever, wherever you're going to, right? You get some food money, some shopping money, and then you come back and you exchange your money back into you, its original currency. And you may find that you actually get less or maybe a bit more than you would have expected. And that is because there's been a fluctuation in price since you've been away and come back. So that is exactly what we are doing just in digital time um, from our mobile phones. Okay. And anything that is paired with the US dollar is known as a major currency. So we have AUD USD. We've got USD JPY. We've got NZD USD, so the Kiwi dollar with the United States dollar, right? So those are known as our majors. And then we have our minors. So that's anything paired without the US dollar. So our cross pairs. So you've got um, GBP, JPY, for example. So that's the pound against the yen. We've got CAD Chef, which is the Canadian dollar with the Swiss franc. There are so many different combinations and you are gonna really get to know these currency pairs quite intimately and get to know how they move. I like to think of them as their own, they have their own personalities. And once you get to understand maybe two or three currency pairs really deeply, that is when trading becomes so fun because you know exactly how they move, right? Um, and then as well as those, we have our majors, we have our minors. We also have our exotics, which 
commonly aren't traded, but they are there. They are options for you. Um, but because of lockdown and because of coronavirus and all the things that are happening, are, are technically the most steady right now. So a lot of people are doing a lot more research into these and starting to trade these a lot more. Personally, I love the Mexican peso. I think it is so much fun. But um, yeah, if you're interested in some exotic currency pairs, do some research and find some ones that could be really fun for you and you can become a beast trader of that currency pair. We also have our commodities, which include oil, it includes gas. We've got metrade gold or silver. We've got our company stocks and crypto so if you are interested in trading a bit of crypto then there are um, go live educators who can help you do that okay so there are so many different things that you can be trading so you should never feel like there's nothing to do or like there's no opportunities in the market the opportunities are there we just need to learn how to how to see those and have the skill to know how to make the most of those opportunities okay Guys, we're going to go on to talking about buying and selling and talking about our candlesticks. Can I just get a 777 if the chat? If you are with me, you are getting value and you are excited about just getting to trade some of those currency pairs. Yes, Nyasha is ready to go. Got some heavenly sevens in the chat. And guys, James built this is on the chat. Wow. Beast trader and an amazing leader too. Really nice to see you. Okay, guys, candlesticks, let's go. If you haven't seen one of these before, you're going to get to know real fast because the, the candlesticks is the, is the language of the market. And this is what we use to analyze what is happening, okay? Every single candlestick tells us something very, very particular about what has happened during that period of time. So if you've been looking at a 15-minute chart, each candle represents 15 minutes. That's the same if you're looking at a one-minute chart, represents one minute. Or if you're looking at the day chart, this represents what happened to money in that day. Okay? And a green candle represents a buy candle, so money has gone up in that period of time. And a red candle signifies a sell, so money has actually gone down in value. And um, the, these, we have these thin lines here, and these are known as the wicks. And the thicker area is known as the body, and they tell us some, some very important things here. So with a buy candle, price opens at the bottom of the candle, and it closes at the top. Price opens at the bottom of the body and closes at the top of the body. But during that time, price has explored all of these areas. Okay, so it's opened at the bottom. Maybe it's pulled down a bit. We've had some bullish momentum and it's pulled up. And then it's come back down again. It's retraced and actually closed at the top. Okay, so this shows us exactly where price has moved. I'm just gonna... Somebody got their microphone unmuted. Oh, no, maybe that's me. That's very strange. <laughs> um, okay, so just make sure, guys, you've got your mics on mute just because I, I may be a DJ on here, but I have no idea what's happening. Okay, so that is with a buy candle. So it's the same but the opposite with a sell candle. So price opens at the top. Price pulls down here, explores this area, maybe it comes back up again, but then it actually closes at the bottom of the body. It opens at the top and closes at the bottom. Buy candle opens at the bottom, closes at the top. Sell candle opens at the top and closes at the bottom. I hope that makes sense because when these, these patterns are occurring in so many different like variations, so depending on like how long the wicks are, that's going to tell you what happened and it'll give you a really good idea about where money is going to be moving next because patterns are constantly repeating themselves in the market and that's what you're going to get to learn during your education and you're going to use that to be able to enter and sell in the market. And these candlesticks are moving in these wave formations, right? They're constantly going up and down and up and down and they're moving in a series of uptrends and downtrends and that is what we want to catch. We want to be catching the flow of the river right? We never want to be trading consolidation areas where price is kind of moving sideways in these up and down formations, but it's not really going anywhere. We want to avoid those like the plague, and um, we like to have these up and down channels, okay? So let's say price opened here, for example. It's opened at a low, and price has pulled up to a new higher high. It's higher, it's higher than this high, hence why it's called a higher high, right? But then price pulls back down, it's formed a low, but it, we call this a higher low because it's higher than this low here, right? So we just have this sequence of higher highs and higher lows, which is what characterizes an uptrend. 
okay? We then have a downward trend. Price opens up here, pulls down to a low, pushes up to a lower high, pulls back down to a lower low, and so on and so forth. And that's what characterizes our downward trend here, okay? So when we have an upwards trend, when the market is moving in an upward trajectory, we say that the market is going long or that we have a bullish trend, okay? So it's the bulls versus the bears. A bullish trend, or your educator might say, the market is going long, right? The market is going long, it means that the currency is strong, okay? So you should get ready to go in for a buy. And this is actually, I think this is Euro GBP I pulled this from. So I've drawn a little trend line here to show you we have a higher high, a, a higher low, and another higher high, right? That's what characterizes that channel. And then we have in the opposite direction, our bearish trend. So that downward trend that we were looking at is also known as a bearish trend, where we've got some bearish momentum, right? Your, educa your educator might tell you to short the currency pair. It's really important that we get to know this terminology so that when we're doing our live education and we're trading live with the teachers, that they don't say something and we're left in the lurch, right? It's really important that we just know these little, um, little phrases. Okay, so this is exactly the same currency pair as the trend up here. And you can see my line here. So even though we had some bullish momentum here, actually it would have been a very bad idea to enter into a buy because we know that price is going to respect this trend line and continue on its downtrend, right? So that's why it's really important why, that we zoom out and take a bigger look at the bigger picture as to what is going on with money, just so we can make those really sophisticated choices and not jump into every opportunity that presents itself. We need to, do, we need to use our informed knowledge to make better choices to have higher probability results. Okay, is everyone with me? Can I get another seven in the chat? Or if you've got some emojis that you like to use, I love flames and I also love some thumbs up. If you've got some emojis ready to go, just throw those into the chat box. And remember guys, if you have any questions, I do talk very fast. If you want me to slow down and um, say anything again, literally just let me know. I always have the chat box open so I can see you guys. And also I really appreciate you guys who have your cameras on as well. I see you. The reason why I'm looking over here is because I'm looking in your eyes because I hate staring at my, at the camera. It's just, it's just not normal, right? So I am looking at you guys, I promise. I love seeing you. Okay, so how are we actually calculating these, um, these candles and the waves that they're forming? And guys, we use PIPs and PIP stands for point in percentage point in percentage, which is a unit of measure to um, express the change in value between two currencies. So we've got Euro GBP here on the one hour chart. So every candle represents one hour. And price is currently sitting at the 0 0.88418. And this tells us that the Euro is worth 0 0.88418 for every one Great British pound. Please, could you cover the bearish trend? What are the lows called? So with a bearish trend, the market is going in a downwards trajectory. We've got the bulls versus the bears. The bears are pulling the market down, okay? And we've got a series of lower highs and lower lows. We have a new high form, but it's lower than this high. So that's a new lower high, followed by another lower low. Does that if you guys need this, I'm, this is being recorded, so I'm gonna post this um, onto our learning groups. That you can you can always access it okay so what exactly does it mean on a candle when you say price opened and closed in what respect good i love these questions because this is exactly why we do this call right there are so many questions that we have and we often don't get a chance to um have these explained to us okay when you say price opened and closed in what respect okay so when um let's say for example we're looking at the 15 minute chart okay Price is um, constantly moving, and these candles are representing that. And um, just the general rules of what these, how the, how we can analyze these candlesticks, because they don't use candlesticks just for any reason, right? The, these tell us so much about the market. The rules we have to remember is that price opens at this level, explored all of this area, and closed at this level. With the buy candle, it's got to always open at the bottom and close at the top because price has gone up. So that is what that represents. With a sell candle, price always has to open. So the, this is where the level of money started at. That's why I say price opened, right? Price, the, let's say the euro was worth this amount at this time, 
And then within this 15 minutes, the euro actually went down in value, it went up in value, and actually went down in value again and closed lower. So the euro actually changed its value during that time. So let's go back to our PIP calculations and I can show you this right now. So here, for example, this is a nice one. So euro GBP on the one hour chart. So each candle represents one hour, right? If you guys don't have TradingView, um, just let me know. I can send you a link to TradingView. It's the app or the, the online software that we all use to analyze the charts. It's fantastic. Okay. So at the moment, at this present point in time that we've got here, the euro is worth 0 0.88418, okay, relative to the pound. So we know that with a sell candle, price opens at the top and closes at the bottom. We're kind of in the middle of a candle here. I hope you guys can see it. It's quite small, um, but price will open at the top of the body. So just around here. So it would have been a couple of pips more. And it's explored, it's gone up a little bit. So we've seen that the price has actually come up a little bit into this little wick area, but it's pulling back down. It's pulling back down. So this candle actually tells me that the price is currently moving in a downwards trajectory. So if you wanted to scalp, you, if you're gonna be a scalper, you actually could jump in and, and crap, crap, um, grab some pips in a downwards movement, okay? Um, but let's say for example here, we've got this nice green body here, nice green candle. So with a green candle, we always know that price opens at the bottom of the body because it has to go up, right? It's a green candle. Price has maybe pulled down a little bit, explored this area. Nope, not having any of that. It's coming up to this top of the wick. Maybe it's a bit too much for that point in time. It's pulled back down and closed at this level here. I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense. Okay, got it. Who is dictating what price is opening it? Okay. Well, we know who's dictating the price. It's a whole collection of people and it's the people who are engaging in the market. It is the commercial banks. They sit at the very top and they are pushing and pulling money. They're constantly manipulating money in the markets. And the thing is they're doing it at a massive, massive scale. Guys, we're using our 0 0.01 lot size. We don't touch, we don't have a dent in the markets. It's constantly money passing hands between banks, right? Between the banks, between, between different countries. Money is constantly passing hands. And the only time where us little guys, where we actually have a real effect on the market is if we are um, collectively making trades together at any one point. So let's say, for example, one of the sessions I was on today with Millie Mills, if you guys like to trade high frequency, it's very, very fun. If you like scalping, she's doing her session. There are about 3,000 people on the call, guys. So if there are 3,000 of us little guys placing 0 0.05 trades, 0 0.08, you know? that actually has a massive impact on the market and you can see it when it happens. So that's when we have a control over the market because these are telling you who is buying and who is selling, right? And when we have these big institutional moves, I'm gonna show you an institutional move later on in a few minutes, yeah? When we have these big institutional moves, we know that actually this is the banks pushing money into a particular currency. And this is why it's really important uh, about the news and what we know about physical international trade. Because when things happen with trade, that is when it's reflected on these markets. Something that happens in the real world will have an effect on the value of price at that time. I hope that makes sense. So let's go on and do a bit more um, calculating. I'm gonna show you guys how we calculate these pips, okay? So what we do in order to figure out how much we're gonna be, go back, go back, there we go. In order to figure out um, how much we're going to be earning or potentially risking, we look at the two figures here. We take off the eight, this last figure, this is known as a pipette, we don't need that. And we just focus on those last two figures, okay? And let's say I wanted to catch 10 pips going for a buy. I want to catch 10 pips going for a buy. All I need to do is add 10 to this number. So my take profit level will be at 0 0.88518 because we put the pipette back on, okay? The pipette is, a small, is the smallest point of percentage that you can um, analyze currency. So we don't really need to focus on that one, okay? We just focus on these two figures here. And sometimes the third one, if we're then passing up into the next 100 boundary, okay? So let's say um, I wanted to catch um, 60 pips going for a buy. 60 pips going for a buy. 
all I need to do is add 60 to this number, which means that my take profit level will be 0 0.89018. Does that make sense? I hope we're all on the same page. We're going to do some more calculations now. Let's go. And my guy from the hangover is doing that quick maths. And so will you. Okay, so let's say we're looking at Euro NZD now, the Euro against the Kiwi dollar on the 15 minute time frame. So um, each candle represents 15 minutes and it's very wicky. We've got these large rejection wicks here, which is telling us that price is trying to push up. It's really rejecting these areas. And these wicks are telling us that loads of people are being taken out of the market. So the banks are really trying to move and get people out so they can push them in a certain direction. Again, this is going to sound like a lot, but once you do your education, you're on the charts more, 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 you're going to, you're going to, this is going to become like second language to you. Okay. It's going to make a lot of sense. I promise. So let's say I enter in for a buy at this green line here, the 1.81106. And my take profit level is this nice dotted blue line. Can anyone tell me how many pips I am, I'm trying to catch? How many pips am I trying to catch, guys? Jamie, give it another go. Sophia's got it. Tyrone has got it. Muz oh, Muzamil's got it. Lee, Lee, try, try again, Lee. Stephen's there. Leah is there. Nice guys. There are 40 of you on the chat. It's so nice to be here with you guys. Absolutely right. It is 30. Yes, we are catching 30 pips here. And I know that um, we do have some discrepancy with these um, pipettes, but we really don't need to focus on those, okay? We're looking at these last two digits. So yes, a nice 30 pip ride, nice and easy. Again, that is what, nearly two, two thirds of your daily, daily target to hit, right? Nice. Let's move on, let's do another one. Okay, guys, we have an institutional move here. This is what I want to show you. This large candle here, we're looking at AUD NZD, the Aussie dollar with the Kiwi dollar on the one hour chart. In one hour, it will, an hour and a, and a half, I guess, one hour, Price was pushed up so dramatically, right? And this could only be the banks. We had no news. We had nothing going on that could have preempted us for this move, right? Usually we know what news is coming out that day because of Forex Factory. If you don't know forexfactory.com, write that down. I use it every single day. Have it bookmarked on your browser so you can check it first in the morning so that you know what news is coming out that day and which currency pairs to avoid. I do it every single day. It's one of my rules, okay? So nothing was in the news for this. Nothing could have, could have shown us that this was going to happen. So this is known as an institutional move. Something happened in the physical world, which meant that money was pushed into the Australian dollar. Okay. And um, on doing some um, hindsight research, it was to do with, with trade, to do with China. Okay. So just have a really good sense about what happened there. But I want to know what is the trend this is my first question okay i've got two questions here what is the trend and this may feel like a trick question but i want to actually get you guys thinking okay <laughs> oh jamie was looking at the black line don't worry i had a lot of lines there sorry i do take screenshots from trades that i actually take so that's probably why you're seeing quite a few lines so i hope it's making sense but i like to share with you real trades that i'm taking just you know it's very easy to just screenshot a chart i'd much rather take things that are that are real you know, I like to catch 30 pips every now and again. But guys, what is the trend? Who can tell me? Who has an idea? If you have a question about it, put the question in the chat. Put the question into the chat, guys. Okay, so Lee says sideways. Steven's saying downward bearish. We've got an upwards trend. We've got everything going on here, guys. And you're right, it's confusing. This is confusing. But um, who said it? Lee Rumble has got the nail on the head there. We've got some sideways movement happening here, an area of consolidation. And it's really bouncing between these zones, this, this, this um, area down here and this area up here. It's not sure where it wants to go. So what we do is we watch these and we wait for a breakout then see what it's going to do and continue on that trend. However, 
we had a massive institutional move. Money was pushed into that into that um, currency pair for into that currency, let I say, um, for about an hour, hour and a half, and um, this is the result that we've got. And then it continues with um, a period of consolidation. So yes, we've had some bullish momentum here bullish momentum and it's continued on this um, uh, sideways movement okay so I hope that makes sense and this is a good I've done a little trick question here because it's a good example of actually how the market is going to look it's not going to look sweet all the time so it's good for us to know actually um, what areas we should really be avoiding or maybe if we can see some opportunities we can we can start to develop that okay but I want to know how many pips um, what is this? What is this area of liquidity? If you don't know the word liquidity, write that down. Liquidity. This is a big area where price is going to want to pull back down. The banks really don't like to see these really big spaces. It's good. It's a good way of pushing people out of the market, and then they can make money coming all the way back down. Okay, so that's known as liquidity areas that need to be filled. But I want to know how many pips fills this zone. How many pips fills this area of liquidity? So we've got these two numbers here. So who can tell me? And yes, we're going over into the next 100 boundary. <laughs> Lee says, what do I win? Lee, you're gonna win a lot of pips in the future. That's what I see. Brad's in there, Stephen. Oh, Stephen, give it another go. You're so close. You are so close. Who else has got it? Tasha has got it. I see you. Jamie is with us. John, give it another go, give it another go. Yes, Stephen. <clears throat> Remember guys, we don't focus on the pipette. We just leave that and we focus on the last two or the three digits. Yes, it is 104. 104 pip movement in an hour. Crazy, crazy. But this is good because it allows us to see what, how you know how the market can and will move the, I always say the market does whatever she wants the market will do whatever she wants and we just have to respect it and um, and follow on as, as we can and be just prepared for any possible outcome right so even though yes we may have had a stop loss hit that's great because that means our account has been saved so even if I hit a stop loss I'm happy because I know I've got more money still left in my account that I can still play with, and I find a new opportunity to jump into, okay? Never be afraid, guys. We do not trade with fear. If we're trading with fear, we should just quit, okay? So, in this one, we're looking at the, the Great British Pound against the Aussie on our chart. And I am going to set a trade here. Let's, let's go in for a sell. I'm seeing quite a bit Oh, uh, bull um, excuse me, it's been a very long day. Some bearish momentum. We've got bearish momentum down here. And then we're seeing this retracement. Price is pushing back up, pushing back up. And what I'm expecting is price to continue um, with this bearish, with this bearish move, okay? So I wanna catch, let's say how many, I, I wanna catch 33 pips going for a sell. 33 pips going for a sell. Where is my take profit level? Where should I set my take profit, guys, if I'm trying to catch 33 pips going for a sell? Thirty-three pips. I'm going for a sell. Where am I going to set my take profit level? Guys, we've got Anne-Marie Talbot in the chat. How are you doing? I'm just checking out who's in the chat today. So good to see you. Lammy is in the chat. Hey, Lammy, I hope you're good. I hope you've gotten off that Pokemon Go. It's good to see you on the call. <laughs> Narissa is in the chat. Hey, girl. Niasha, I see you. Pammy is here. Guys, Pammy is a beast. Beast trader, beast boss lady. So nice to see you. And Wes is here as well. Guys, I love seeing the regulars. Feels like family. Okay, so I wanted, I wanted to catch 33 pips going for a sell. Where is my take profit level? Remember guys, we always put that pipette back on at the end. We always put it on at the end. 
This one is a little bit more confusing. We're going in for a sell, remember guys. 33 pips going for a sell. Nice, Bunmi is there, is just, just put the pipette back on. Put the pipette back on. Nice. Yes, guys. So my take profit level is gonna be at the 1.89302. 302, we literally just take away 33 from 63. We got 30. Nice, rounded, hearty number. 33 pips. Oh, I'll take some to know Girl. 33 pips. Nice, guys. Well done. And it's going to feel like a lot. It's going, honestly, if you feel like you're not mathsy, don't worry. Don't tell yourself that you're not going to understand or that you're not going to get it because you will. Don't make excuses because uh, you may be a, a little bit anxious, a little bit fearful for now. But with practice, this is going to get so much easier because Eventually, you're going to be taking trades on the bus on the way to work, maybe on your lunch break. So you're going to have to get good at doing that quick math, those mental arithmetics very, very quickly. And that, you know, when you start practicing that, it's going to get a lot easier, I promise. Okay, you guys did great for your, for your first session for some of you. Well done, guys. So we know how to calculate pips. We know our market. We know what we're trading, right? But how are we actually engaging in the market? How are we accessing it, right? And what we're doing is we are choosing to expose our account to the market at a particular rate. And we do this with our lot sizes, with our position sizes, should I say. And you can choose from a micro, a mini, or a whole lot position. Okay. And as a general rule of thumb, we say 0 0.01 per 100 pounds in your account. 0 0.01 position per 100 pound account. So that moves at 10 cents per pip. You catch 10 pips, you got yourself a dollar, okay? And then as soon as you go into the next 100 boundary, you can then um, change your, your micro position, right? So say you've, you've worked up, caught pips, caught pips until you hit 200 pounds, yes! Double your lot size, 0 0.02, okay? So let's say, for example, you've got um, 480 pounds in your trading account. What is your lot size going to be? What is your lot size? If you have 480 pounds sitting in your trading account looking all nice. Jamie's got it. Jamie's in there. He wants to catch those, those pips. 0 0.04, really nice. So even though, you know, you might be so close to having 500 pounds in your account, as soon as you put in 0 0.05 position, you are over leveraging, okay? Do not over leverage your account. Give your account space to breathe. Because I promise you, you may win a few. You may win a few. But when you start to, to, to lose trades and you're still using that larger position size, you're going to see your money drain very quickly. Nice. Jamie says, personally, I do 0 0.01 for every 200 pounds. Brilliant. Perfect. You know, I actually do the same thing. I actually do the same thing. I changed my risk management recently. So I only changed... Uh, trade 0 0.01 for every 200 pounds it just makes you feel a lot less anxious and guys trading is supposed to be fun so when i'm only you know you're still slowly building your account because you know you're going to hit those those numbers your financial goals you're going to hit those regardless because that's a byproduct of doing the work right but by having you know less risk you get to trade easy and trading actually becomes more fun so i love that jamie thank you so much for sharing so guys, you have worked up and up and up and you've built your account to your first 1,000 pounds. Life is sweet, yeah? We move up to a 0 0.1 position, $1 per pip, catch 10 pips, you've got $10. $10 right there, really, really nice. And when you've built up to 10,000 pounds in your account, you're laughing, right? One position, $10 per pip, catch 10 pips, that's $100 right there. Okay, but make sure that you're building this up nice and slowly. Yes, you can open an account with five thousand pounds, but guys, I promise you, you're not going to be mentally ready to see those numbers in drawdown. And when you start to see reds, right, your anxiety is going to kick in, your fear is going to kick in. I can't lose any more money, even though you technically haven't lost because you haven't hit stop loss, right? But when we start to feel those things, we think I can't risk any more and we pull out of the trade and we choose to lose. That's the only reason why then you end up losing a lot more money because you're not ready, you're not mentally ready to see money moving like that. We need to change our relationship with money and that helps, that is developed when we 
build our account from small, 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 and just build it up gradually. Guys, it is like a ladder. One of the girls on my team, she started doing some training for um, our newcomers today. Fantastic analogy. We have to work up like a ladder. You can't jump up to the top of a building. You have to climb the ladder. So do the work and build your account steady, slowly. We are smart, sophisticated traders, people. So if you're not sure about your leverage or your account size, um, check out forextimedup.com and my FX book. Fantastic websites. Again, I use these every single day and um, they just help you to work out, you know, what your appropriate risk should be for your account size. Okay. Lee asks, can you do a buy or a sell on its own or does one have to trade to be buy and sell together? What? Can you explain that again? Because you know what, Lee, hold that thought because I do my hotline bling session at the very end. and Oh golly, we've got time. Okay, hold on to that. I'm going to ask you to um, in in with your words. Okay. Oh, you've got no mic. Never mind. <laughs> I will answer that in the Q and A session at the end. Okay. We're going to come back. Cool, guys. If you don't have these words written down anywhere in your notes, I want you to write them down now. They are really, really important. But a lot of the time, people don't actually know what they mean. So volatility. Volatility means the variation of a trading price over time. Really important that we understand volatility. The variation of trading price over time. Okay, spread. Spread is the price difference between buy and sell price. The price difference between buy and sell price. And then we have leverage, which is the exposure that you receive on each pound in your account. The exposure that you receive on each pound in your account, okay? Really important that you get to know these things, guys, because once you start to trade properly, you're gonna start to see your accounts grow. And, but you need to really start to understand what trading style are you going to be implementing? Are you a technicals trader or a fundamentals? Which currency pairs would you like to be trading, right? What times are you going to be trading? Maybe, you know, are you an Asian session trader? Are you accumulation? New York, London? What works with your schedule? You need to make sure you have a trading plan. So, uh, you know, your daily tasks in order to hit your financial goals. Being organized with your, with your trading. And then your mindset, guys. Trading is 90% mindset, okay? Remember, 95% of traders fail. 95% of traders fail within their first year. And by fail, I don't mean experience losses because losses are part of trading. It includes risk, okay? You can't fail by having losses. You fail by quitting. You fail when you quit. 95% of traders quit in their first year because their mindset is not adjusted to experiencing drawdown. Okay, so really, really work on developing your mindset. Any, any daily motivation stuff that you can do or mindset development stuff that you can do, please be doing it. I thought it was very wishy-washy in the beginning, but oh boy, did I need it because I experienced some big losses myself and now I've come out of the other side only because of the mindset work. So make sure that you're doing that as part of your training. Make sure you're doing that as part of your training. Okay, because well, this is it guys, I'm sharing my blueprint with you. My blueprint to 5,000 pounds because I've done it and it's very, very straightforward. All you need to do is stick to your compounding plan. Guys, if you don't have a compounding plan, talk to your mentor. You should have a compounding plan. If you haven't got one, I would be asking your mentor, why haven't I got one? They need to be um, assisting you with your growth so that you have a really good idea of what your percentages are that you need to hit every single day, right? So if you have 200 pounds in your account and all you need to do is increase it by 3% every day, it's not aggressive, it's very, very doable, okay? You know that you can have around 500 pounds in that account in 30 days, a month, pretty good. But double the time, you've doubled that amount of money and so on and so forth. It snowballs very, very quickly. So much so that you should, you should have your first 10,000 pounds in your account in 130 days. There is no reason why you should be those numbers. Okay, maths doesn't lie. Just make sure that you are consistent with your trading. 3% every day isn't even that much, okay? At the moment during lockdown, I'm doing on average like 15% every day. Yeah, really, really doable. If you, if you um, again, if you don't have a compounding plan, speak to your mentor. 
Okay, guys, I want to see you all winning. I want to see you at that six year party because I'm going to be there. Okay, so guys, with your training, just make sure that you are very strict with yourselves in terms of how much you're doing per day. You know, it doesn't even have to be an hour, half an hour, half an hour a day, watching a go live session, maybe doing some reading, read Rich Dad Poor Dad if you just want to do some motivational work, Trading in the Zone, it's an audio book that is on YouTube, it's fantastic. It's so good. I listen to it all the time. Okay. Because your learning doesn't have to be boring. Make the most of the educators. Your learning group is your community. Okay. So that you can be really strict with your learning. Learn formal, trade casual. Trade on the bus, people. We like to trade on the bus on the way to work. Okay. So now it's time for my hotline bling session. We've got five minutes left on the call. So let's, um, thank you, Lee. And Brad wants me to go back through those words one more time. I can do that. Lee's question is from the example that I gave on selling 30, selling to catch 33 pips. Does one trade consist of a buy and sell or can you simply buy one currency alone? Okay, 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 right. So when we are trading, yes, we have the buy low, sell high thing. That is still exactly what it is for a buy. But when you're selling, it's a bit different. And this is where your broker really comes in handy because whenever we're trading, right, we're never actually buying that currency pair and selling it. Excuse me. <laughs> we're never actually buying that currency and selling it. What we are doing is we are instructing our broker to buy because they act as our middleman. We say, hey, market is going to go up. Can you buy this currency for me? And then they then sell it again for us. And that's where we get our profit. So buy low, sell high. And the exact same thing happens when we're going in for a sell, right? It's just done very quickly and we don't really see that middleman stuff. So when we're going in for a sell, we are telling our broker price is going to come down. So I'm going to need you to buy this currency pair so that when price goes down and takes somebody else out of the market, because it's constantly changing hands, right? As soon as you hit take profit, somebody's hitting stop loss. So simply that money is exchanging hands. You get that in your profit. So that's kind of what happens. We just don't really need to pay too much attention to it because it's happening so fast. But that's technically what is happening. So yes, when we're selling, we are technically buying and then selling, but we just call it selling. I hope that, hope that makes sense, okay? Um, let me go through those words one more time for you guys, for you, if you, those of you who didn't manage to catch that. So we had volatility, lightning fast with those pens, people. Volatility, the variation of trading price over time. The variation of trading price over time. We then have spread, the price difference between buy and sell. The price difference between the buy and the sell. And then we have leverage, which is the exposure that you receive on each pound in your account. And you then manage that with your lot size. Okay, this session is being recorded, so you can always go back. Okay, how do you enter a trade, a TP2? What's the difference between daily, daily and trend stop loss? Okay, so when you are analyzing the chart and you are identifying a trend, right? You're seeing an opportunity to jump in, catch some pips. You may see that actually it has room to go higher. So you can set yourself a take profit one and a take profit two. So you can do this two ways. You can twin trade it, open two trades, make sure you're not over leveraging. So you then split your leverage. 0 0.02 becomes two 0.01s. Does that make sense? You set one of the take profits is at take profit one. And the second one is set at take profit two. Or you can just have one trade. And then when price is at that level, wait for it to retest or do, you know, have your confirmations and enter again to hit take profit two. So it just depends how you like to trade, okay? And the difference between a tra uh, the daily and the trend stop loss, hmm. So, which, William, which, which educator are you on? Are you trading with Baz every morning? Because this sounds like this could be maybe a Baz strategy. Um, so you have a daily stop loss, which um, is looking at yesterday's low or high, and you can use that as a stop loss. However, it's, you're increasing your, your risk of more losses because it could be a 100 pip difference, right? So that's known as a daily stop loss. But, you know, I would recommend using a stop loss that's best for you. So maybe actually you're only, you're only willing to risk 30 pips. So you should be setting a 30 pip stop loss. Okay. Um, how do you determine the best pair to trade? Well, this is a good question. Um, what's this website called? I need to go into my browser quickly and just check what this website is called so I can share it with you guys.
I'm just checking out my, uh, my bookmarks. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I go onto forexfactory.com and that tells you, why don't I share my screen with you? That way you can see it. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen. This is, uh, let me go on to the other one because I don't do this first. I do Forex Factory first. Forex Factory first, and I identify where there is news uh, in relation to the currencies that I'm looking at. So US dollar had a red and orange folders today, so I completely avoided the US dollar. Did not trade it at all. The yellow folders are fine. GBP had some orange, so it's just best to kind of avoid it for that time frame, maybe for a few hours. Yellows are fine. Oranges, keep an eye on them. Reds, do not trade. So you're kind of like crossing out the currency pairs that you don't need. I'm whittling down my choices. And then I look at the currency strength meter and I see which currencies are strong in relation to others. So the euro is a very, very strong compared to US dollar, Aussie dollar, the yen, CAD. So I'd be very happy to trade Euro, Euro USD, Euro, Euro CAD, Euro JPY, right? Or maybe I could do um, uh, USD Chef, it's pretty good. But we don't wanna trade Euro, Euro Chef, we don't wanna trade that because they're too equal, they'll be consolidating and fighting against each other. Or AUD USD, that would be a very bad one. Same for GBP JPY, right? They're, they're on the same level of strength so it would, just be, it would just be quite painful to trade. You'd much rather trade Euro CAD. Nice, strong move. So you can just go in there about money is being pushed into. Money's being pushed into the Euro. It's strong. It's pulling the market up. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Guys, it is coming up. It is nine o'clock on the dot. Nine o'clock on the dot, guys. And um, we have Christopher Terry, our CEO of IM Academy, coming in and doing a call for us. You guys should have the links out. Your mentor should be sending you the links, um, but you can access it on um, IM, IM Center. Go live. Sorry, my mind's gone blank. You can access that on Go Live. Guys, it is very, very rare that people get access to their, their, their chief exec, right? It's very rare that in a massive organization, the people within it get access to their leader, the person who's created this opportunity for them. And everything he has to say is so, so poignant. I've seen him in person. He's incredible. So go and talk to the guy who's given us this opportunity. Go and talk, go and listen to him. He's coming in and sharing his wisdom with us. So um, that's over on Go Live literally right now. So I will see you guys over on that call. I hope you guys have had a lovely evening. Guys, if, you have, if you've gotten some value from this beginner's call today, whether you are a veteran or whether you are brand new, I want to see whether this has, you've gotten some value. So throw some eights into the chat. Let's go. Who's got some eights? We've got some claps over here. I see you. Thank you so much for the applause. Thanks, guys. Jess, so nice to see you. I hope you're doing okay. I've learned some more. Thanks, John. Nice, boomy. Nice to see you guys. I hope you've had a lovely evening. Go enjoy a glass of wine because I certainly will be. And guys, I will see you on the trading floor. Stay safe, wash your hands and see you next week, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'll see you on the, in the market tomorrow. Let's go, guys. Let's go.